Hi there. Today I want to talk about throwing in VR and why it doesn't really work for me. I've been playing some video, some VR games on the Quest 2. In the past I used to play some VR games on the Index or the Vive. And on all of those I noticed as long as it involves throwing it basically doesn't work. At least not for me. I pick up an object, you know, I aim it, I throw and it goes wherever it decides it goes. Or I put my entire weight in it and I throw something really hard and it ends up right at my feet. Or I want to give something a gentle toss and it just flies off. So there's no rhyme or reason, there's no correlation I feel between what I do to an object while it's still in my hand and what happens to the object after I release it. And I would like to investigate why that is. Because, as it so happens, I'm not the game developer, but I do have a couple of applications where you can incidentally throw objects. You pick up an object and you can throw it. And I've always felt that in those it just works really well, it's really natural. Um, I pick up an object, I aim where I want to throw it, I wind up, I throw it, and it goes where I think it should go. So my question was, why does it work in those applications, but seemingly not in, basically not in any of the games I've tried. And I happen to have this test bed here, which, is, which I made for interaction, and we don't need this right now. And the point is that you can throw things in it. I have this ball dispenser here, I can pick up as many balls as I want, and I can throw them in the environment, there's gravity and all of that good stuff. So I want to start by hopefully demonstrating to you guys that in this program, throwing just works. Objects end up generally where I want them to be. I'm not a good thrower in real life, but essentially it works as well in here as it does for me in real life. So I just want to throw a couple of balls, just do some easy underhanded tosses and kind of demonstrate that. So I'm going to throw something up close to my feet. That's about two meters away in VR space for scale, that target back there. That's exactly 20 meters away in the virtual space. I'm going to throw something in the middle distance. That's, I'm going to say, is about eight meters away. And then something a bit all the way out there. That's about between 12 and 15 meters, a bit hard to tell. And those things ended up exactly where I thought they should, says the Texas Sharpshooter. But now I can pick up more balls and I can aim for these balls again that are already there and see if I can actually hit them. So let's go for the close one. And you know, it's a bit too far. That's right on there. So essentially, as you can hopefully see over my shoulder, I'm just throwing these things into a huge, nice little close pile right there. There's no collision detection in this program. It's really super simple, so ignore that. Now let's go for the middle distance. I wind up a little bit more and I basically hit that ball. That was too close, but not too bad. I, right there, okay, a bit a little bit too far to the left, that one is right in the pile, that one is right in the pile, that one hit the first, that one hit the first ball, world class botcher player right here. Okay, that went a bit far, let's go for the far one, there I really have to aim, I want to wind up and throw, and it ended up short, okay, let's throw a little bit harder, and wow, Awesome. Throw a little bit harder. Right there. Oh, that almost, yeah, that is right there. So again, this is about 12 meters away in VR space. And yes, I can put not such a tight group at that distance, which is not surprising. That is pretty far away. Wow, that's right in the middle. But I hope you believe me that these things generally go, well, that's actually really good, considering, again, that I'm not a good thrower in, wow, not a good thrower in real life. And I'm even using different trajectories. I'm doing a couple of high throws, and I'm doing a couple of low and fast throws. Okay, that was bad. Okay, that was really bad. Let's see. Okay, that was a bit too far. Let's see, I can do some, some over the shoulder ones. Wind up like a pro and throw this. Didn't go so well. Okay, I just, no, everything's fine. Okay, that actually went really far to the target back there. Ooh, that went right at my feet. Button didn't, the button didn't release. Okay, well, Let's do some side flings. Oh, nice one. Okay, that went wild. Oh, perfect. Okay, I hope you get my point that in this program, things go where I want them to go. This feels really natural. I don't have to worry about it. I just throw things and they end up where they're supposed to go. Great. And so let's investigate why that is and why it might not work in other applications. Okay, so let's talk about the physics of throwing. How does it work? The idea is really simple. I pick up an object, I move it in my hand, I wind up, and as I do that, the object picks up velocity from my hand, it picks up momentum from my hand, and then at the moment I release the object, it just keeps going with whatever momentum and velocity it had right before the moment 
I let it go and then gravity takes over and if you ignore air resistance, which you're going to do here, then it will fly in a nice parabolic arc and hit the ground at some point or something else. So the practical question here is now when I hold an object in my hand, how do I calculate in a VR program the velocity of that object as I'm going and more importantly, how do I calculate the velocity of the object exactly at the moment when I release it? And so we are going to try that and we're going to see how that works. And so I'm going to pick up this ball, wind up and throw it. Okay, that went pretty far. So now let's have a look at this graph here. What does this graph mean? And what you're drawing here is the velocity of the ball over time. So here is where I picked up the ball, and then I just held it in my hand. And here is where I wind up, and here is where I wind up, and here is where I release it. And you see something interesting. is first of all that these velocity measurements are rather noisy. There is some jaggedy and some zigzagging going on. And then this here is the really interesting part where the velocity right before the moment of release was much higher than it was at the moment of release. Essentially there was a noise spike there, like this one, just much larger, and I released at the moment when the noise spike came back down. And then the ball, just as you can see here, it went up, so it became a little bit slower, and then it picked up speed, and then, you know, it fell back down. So, imagine now that I had released the button just a 90th of a second earlier, and I had released it right here. Then I would have made the exact same motion, but now the ball would have flown off with this velocity and then gone significantly farther than it did with this one. And I think that is one of the prime reasons where this unreliability comes in, where I throw something very fast and it ends up flying very slow or vice versa. So now where, what is this noise? Is that random noise? And the answer is no, it's not. So in order to investigate that better, let's, uh, let's throw a couple more balls. I'm going to take this one and I'm really going to wind up and throw it. And now if you look at this, oh, this is a great example again, where right before the moment of release, the ball was going much faster than it was going at the moment of release. Pick it up, wind up and throw. Oh, that one went all the way out there. Oh yeah, this is a fantastic example. Okay, so here you can see how the velocity went up. And then it got back corrected, went up, got back corrected, went up, and then the object flew off super fast, so it went way farther than it should have gone. Now, again, I said these noise spikes are not, that's not random noise, and if you have actually watched my video about the uh, sensor fusion for object tracking, which I'm going to link from right there, then you recognize these things. This is actually an artifact of sensor fuse controller tracking. What is happening here is that as you move the controller very fast, its position and its velocity primarily gets predicted by the inertial man navigation unit inside it, and so there's drift. The controller actually picks up more velocity than it should, and then at some point later, the absolute reference frame of the tracking system, the camera or the spinning lasers in my case, kick in and say, whoa, 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 you haven't actually moved as fast as you thought, I'm going to back correct you. And so it puts the position of the controller and therefore any object that's held in the controller backwards. And then the speed builds up again and it gets back corrected all the way down here. It builds up again, it gets back corrected and that was the moment when I released. So again, if I had released here, the object would have gone faster if I had released here or there, again, would have been the same motion, but at the end of that motion, the object would have flown with this velocity or that velocity, which is very far apart. And that is, again, I think, where this unreliability comes from. So this idea of just estimating the velocity of an object in my hand by taking its position at one frame and taking its position at the next frame and then dividing the distance vector by the length of the frame, 1 90th of a second, is extremely unreliable because it suffers from this stuff. So how do you get rid of that noise? How can you make this more reliable? And one approach now would be, well, why don't we just average out these measurements to get rid of the noise? And I'm going to say right away that's a bad idea. For one, it, you have to average quite a lot to get rid of this. And for the other thing, when you average out in order to smoothen it, you can only look into the past, which means that the velocity, essentially there's going to be lag. If I throw an object overhead like this, and I'll release it right here, then I expect the object to keep flying in this direction. But if the velocities get averaged over time, then due to the time delay, the estimate might be that the velocity goes up. And so if even I think I should release the object this way, it might fly out that way, which then means it will fly out in any random direction. And so I think that in many of the games where I've seen objects fly off in more or less random directions is an effect from smoothing the motion artificially after the fact. So it turns out, like I said, not a good idea, I think. There is a better way of doing that, and we are going to look at that right now. So what is that better way of doing it? 
And the trick here is that in modern tracking systems, which are based on sensor fusion between IMUs and external reference frame, the tracking system doesn't just give us the position and orientation of the controller on every frame, it also gives us the controller's linear and angular velocities. So why don't we use the linear velocity of the controller to calculate the linear velocity of the held object instead of estimating it ourselves because the tracking system will do a much better job at it than we will, as we have seen in the graphs from the last example. Um, the idea is that the velocities of the controller are also the results of sensor fusion in the tracking system, but they suffer from a very different type of noise as we're going to see in a moment. And as before, I'm just going to pick up the ball, I'm going to wind up and I'm going to throw it, and we're going to see how different that is between using the linear velocity as reported as opposed to estimating the velocity of the object ourselves. So I'm going to pick it up, wind it up and throw. And then we're going to look at the graph again. And now you can see that this graph looks very different. It's the same basic shape, but you can see that it's a lot less noisy. There's still a little bit of waviness in here, especially right there and right there. And of course, as the position of the controller and the velocity get overestimated, as I said, the velocities also get slightly overestimated, but to a smaller degree. And when they get back corrected, it's not the tracking system roughly setting back the position of the controller by whatever the overestimate was in the first place, but it is gently correcting the linear velocity. So this is a much better representation of the instantaneous velocity of the controller than, uh, than it was what we did before. And so you can see here that there's no noise spikes, and so the velocity at the moment of release, and this is not just the magnitude of velocity which you're plotting here, but also the direction of velocity, is a lot more closely correlated to what my intent as a user is. So to do a couple more examples, I'm just going to pick this up and throw it. And again, you're seeing that there's... Oh, here's a great example. So you can see here, this is what happens when the tracking system corrects the velocity it reports. It doesn't make a spike where it goes back, but it just keeps it flat for a second. As it doesn't touch the velocity, it just keeps it that way. And so even if these things happen, if I were to release the object at this point, it wouldn't really make a difference whether I release here or there, because the velocities are the same at those points. The actual velocity is still going to be somewhere there in the middle, but the artifacts on that are going to be a lot smaller. And there's no delay, because the tracking system estimates the velocity of the controllers at the instant it reports them. So there's no backlooking and no averaging, no smoothing going on. This is just as it is reported. And this is actually the trick. This is why I think that in this program, throwing just works. I can throw things and they go generally where I think they will. I can throw things at all kinds of distances. I can throw things at the same place. Again, Bodger King right there. And it just works. You can see here how the velocity I wind up. It goes up very smoothly. I release at this moment. The velocity gets exactly taken in. And then it just falls down. So there's now one thing that needs to be talked about that I think is the reason why potentially some other software applications or games don't do it this way. When we throw something, we don't throw something in a shock put fashion like this, where it's just linear velocity. We fling things. We use the, our wrist to give it at the last moment to give the thrown object an extra push. I'm going to throw something, and you're going to see. I'm going to move my hand actually quite slowly, and just at the last moment, I give it an extra push. And you will see how in the graph, OK, the graph was useless. I'm going to give it an extra push. And you can see here how the velocity right before release went up rapidly because I flung my wrist and then I threw the object. So that is the part where I think it gets a little bit interesting. Um, because, okay, let me show the controllers. OK, so the, where is the IMU in the controller? And that's a really good question. I don't really know, but it's somewhere here in the handle, I'm going to say. So what I get, the reported linear velocities of the controller are for a point somewhere here on the handle. So if I just move the controller through space like this, it doesn't matter where I get the linear velocity. It's just always going to be the same. But if I hold an object up here and fling it, then what happens is I'm getting the linear velocity back here, but the velocity of the object is actually much higher because I'm also flinging around this point. So even if I don't move my controller at all and the linear velocity as reported here is zero, I still get the linear velocity for the object just due to the angular velocity of the controller that I have on it. And so this is where math comes in. You have to actually take that angular velocity into account when calculating the velocity of the object you're holding. And the math for that is actually really super simple. You just need to know where the IMU is. You need to know where the center of gravity of your object is. That gives you a distance vector from here to there, pointed this way. 
And then you know that the angular velocity is reported as also a vector, and let's say if I rotate my hand this way, the vector will point that way because it's a right-hand side rotation. So I have a vector going this way and a vector going that way. And it turns out to calculate the linear velocity of an object up here as a result of rotation, I have to take the cross product of the angular velocity vector and the displacement vector and add that to the linear velocity of the controller as reported. And I think that might be what some games don't quite do. So they feel that using the reported velocities doesn't work because it doesn't take flinging into account. You're essentially shot putting everything. And that, of course, is, as I said earlier, not natural. We fling things. But if you do this cross product, that was a really bad example. The button gave out. But if you do this cross product thing, it works exactly like it should. I can just throw these balls just by flicking my wrist. OK, that was another bad example that the controller button didn't hold. There we go. So that's the trick, basically. We have to take the linear and angular velocities of the controller as reported, which are going to be nice and smooth. I can wind up and throw. And here it goes, nice and smooth. There was a little bit of a back correction here, but really not that much. Very small compared to what we saw before. Um, and then I have to calculate the linear velocity at the object center of gravity by using that cross product idea here with the angular velocity. And then it just magically works. And I think that is the reason why things work in here. What I showed you at the beginning of the video was using that method. And I think that other software might not be doing it that way is the reason why I don't think it, why I think it doesn't work there. And that's what I wanted to say. That's the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and have a good day.